Golly, isn't that just beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Sun rising, peaceful lake. Oh, what a great way to start the day. Anyways, good morning, Mason gang. We are vlogging again. We are gonna try to just really stay committed to the fight of videoing at least a couple times a week. So some things have happened. Still running three timbers. You can see, cool hat, cool shirt, cool sign, see that? Some other things are not happening that are quite as cool. And that's why I'm creating this episode of the Mason Gang. Joey, who you've seen in other videos, he's leaving the company. He's one of the partners, which means it's kind of tough. And the reason it's tough is because when you have a partner leave, you have to figure out how to pay out, buy out that partner. Therefore, for all of you that are doing business and you choose to do it with a friend, I wanted to make this video for you. So I'm not trying to poo-poo the idea of starting a business with your best friend. I'm just saying that there are things that you have to be warned about. I mean, because I've started many companies with my best friends and in all honesty, at this point, I don't think I would ever do it again, mainly because of a few glaring reasons that make business and being a best friend really hard. So the first and biggest reason is that you guys are just best friends. Like, it's really hard when you're going through the struggles of running a business to really decipher when you guys should be having business talks about company-centric things and things that don't involve feelings and emotions and when you should be having talks out of love where you're just like best friends, you know? And you're worried about each other. If you guys are best friends and one of the friends are underperforming, it's hard to have that conversation when you've known someone forever. It's hard to say, hey buddy, um, your performance isn't going so well. Uh, can you do better? Then it puts strain on a relationship. People don't like to be attacked. And even if you're not attacking them, sometimes they go, hey, you're my best friend. You're not supposed to give me criticism. So just know, you run a business with your best friend. It puts stress both on your business and it puts stress on your friendship. The second mistake I see, and I've been guilty of this, is just not treating your business with the same rules because you're doing it with your best friend. What I mean by that is not putting in the same rules in your operating agreements or coming up with the same strategies with your owner because a lot of us when we go into business with our best friend we sit there and we say oh that's our best friend i know them so well they will never screw me they i mean after all we're friends and the thing is they might not actively try to screw you but there is a perceived moment where you might work 80 hours a week and they might work 60 and then you got an argument because you're the one pulling more weight for the business, but you haven't defined that. You haven't defined how you guys move forward with a problem like that. You also might not have any org chart in place where it says, you know what, how does that partner exit? What happens if that partner just gets up and leaves? Because you always think to yourself, I don't need an exit strategy with my best friend because my best friend's never going anywhere. But the truth is, they do. I mean, Joey's my best friend. Landscaping wasn't for him. The stress of running the business wasn't for him. So he's moving back to mergers and acquisitions. He's got to do what he's got to do, but it's still messy. And thank God we have at least some type of an operating agreement to say who owns what, how we kind of exit. So it can be civil. third thing is really make sure you define your roles and responsibilities with your buddy because you guys have, have to have a pretty good idea of where you guys want the company to go and what your roles are within that and you got to be self-aware enough to understand who brings what to the table like 
It's just important that you guys also really define within those roles and responsibilities, like what part of the company each of you take care of because you need to make sure that you guys are actually meant to be partners. Even though you're best friends, you might not be perfect partners in the business that you're going into. That's something that Joey and I are kind of figuring out, or that's kind of what's leading to our separation, is Joey doesn't bring as much to the table in the industry of landscaping. So it's hard for him to keep up with everything, which is fine, it's understandable, but we should have addressed that ahead of time. Plants for our project, I haven't showed you that. and. You know what, I just wanna show you this. This is Wilson's nursery. You guys will see me come out here a lot. This place is just freaking beautiful. I just wanna have a big old nursery. Like this, out here in the fields, enjoying the flowers, running around naked by myself. Sorry, that was weird. With that being said, I gotta hustle back to the job site because I am so behind today. Always difficult when you lose one of your main partners in your company. Manage a way to love your friends more than the business. Like at this point, as you all know at this point in the video, I feel like I could not love Joey at this moment. I could decide maybe maybe we shouldn't be friends anymore, but we did that once and that doesn't help anyone. Just remember that business is business. It's a game. You're just playing the game to live a happier life. And if the game goes awry and you lose a friend over it, that doesn't really make the game worth it. So you need to actually think through like, what are your goals? What are your intentions of actually building the company in the first place? And if you're making decisions or you're reacting in a way that makes the game no longer fun, then you're doing it wrong. In the meantime, look at where I'm at right now. Uh, we got ourselves a little project going on over here at Fox Chase. You guys can see a more in-depth video over on our Three Timbers channel. Uh, this is the crew. These guys are awesome. You've seen Nikki before. Gosh, what a legend. Um, we're doing our best essentially to just clean this area up on a budget so they don't want to restack everything because it's too expensive. We ripped out all this rock. You can see it over there in the trailer. You can see that I picked up new stuff earlier and we're just doing a bunch of dogwoods, blue stems, daisies. You can get more detail, but I got to go meet with a client. I need to see bye to these guys. Bye guys. Since we had talked about how to prep to go into business with a friend, we should also talk about how to get out of it if the partnership doesn't work. And the first thing you wanna do if that partnership isn't working and you guys are leaving each other is come up with a decisive, quick exit. Make sure you come up with a valuation and you either buy out that partner or you make sure that their equity decreases in the company to a point where it doesn't hurt you in the future and your other partners as you get bigger. You wanna make sure you have an exit in writing because you wanna make sure that anything you guys agree to is written up so no one can complain in the future. I'd probably get a legal team involved. But I am going to keep thinking about what to do with Joseph while I go get a plant I forgot about. Back to Wilson's, let's go. The second thing you need to do is you need to discuss your future plans. If you're going to be friendly and reasonable, you wanna avoid anything that might pop up in the future that could lead to legal action, and you also wanna just make sure feelings aren't hurt. So you wanna discuss like, what are you doing in the future? What are you planning to do with the company if you're the one staying in it? You wanna discuss like, hey, what do you see as the role? What role do you see that other partner playing, if any at all? And make sure you once again define that and say, hey, if you don't make these, if you don't hit these marks, you don't receive any of the equity or the payment or whatever it is. Just being very transparent, getting it all out there is so important. With that being said, I gotta go look for some plants. Make sure you help yourself and your partner that's leaving. Think about it in a sense that like, hey, you guys are a board. You guys are making a mutually respectable decision for both the company and for the party leaving. This will help both of you guys act more reasonably. It will also help you guys act more as just business people instead of being just friends that are in a scuffle. And it just helps you come up with decisions that are really meant for the business not to hurt each other's feelings selfishly.
Lastly, be civil. Be patient. Accept it. Learn from it. You don't know what you don't know until you go through it. So don't beat yourself up. Get ready to get right back on that horse and keep on trying. It's that simple. Because in all honesty, if you beat yourself up, it doesn't do you any good. If it makes you want to quit, it doesn't do you any good. You just got to learn and be better. Take a look at that. Yep, we're over here at Olio Coworking and we added another office. It's pretty cool. So we took down the rest of the wall here. We found some weird cavern there. Uh, I don't know, there's a big gap behind that wall. It's crazy. And we fabric this wall just like we did in that conference room video that you saw. It's much bigger. And boy, was that a lot of work. A little honesty, we had to do it because there's a phone room right here and that was loud. There's another bathroom right behind this and you could hear people like right there. Actually, it's probably like right there. Uh, people were, were unwrapping toilet paper or using the toilet paper dispenser and it was really loud. And then over here, another bathroom. Yes, new office at Olio. Growing three timbers without a partner. So even if things have been unique, we've been making changes, we're still making progress no matter what. So with that, thank you so much for watching this episode of The Mason Gig. It means a whole lot to me. And I'll see you next time.